Welcome everyone, I am One True Brick, coming at you with another LEGO ExoForce review. Today we will be looking at set number 7707, The Striking Venom. It was released in 2006 with 646 pieces and retailed for around $50. Nowadays, you can expect it to be... This one's a tough one. Because when researching on eBay and Bricklink, I did find them for around the price of $50, but most of them are only available in other countries. So expect to spend a premium on shipping. So with shipping included, instead of spending around like $5 or $10 like most would expect to, this will probably be closer to $20 or $25, especially if you're including the box. So the grand total of the price actually comes up to be around $70 to $75. And if you want to make sure to order within the United States, the cheapest one I could find was a whopping $90. So this set almost doubles in price um, nowadays on secondhand retail. And that makes it tough to recommend as well as for some other reasons. So... This is the largest walking robot battle machine. In the story, this, this battle machine was the big bad that was kind of discussed in whispers throughout the course of the entire year until it finally made its appearance at the end. As you can see, it has a uh, color scheme that includes dark colors to kind of give it that more evil bad guy industrial look that the robot battle machines had. So it includes black, gray, dark green, and then some smatterings of lime and even a little bit of red and brown as well. The light feature on this set feels probably the most gimmicky of any of these sets. As you can see up here, there is a Devastator torso just kind of there and it's attached to these cannons and for the life of me I can't figure out why they decided to have the Devastator's torso up there. I don't know if it's supposed to be a robot or if it's supposed to be just kind of a, a theming of the battle machine and as you can see kind of right here there is also some robot arms so maybe it's supposed to be used as a robot if you wanted it to be. And then the laser function is just kind of tacked on up here and it lights up the eyes. I personally find this to be one of the most disappointing uses of this function of the year. And it definitely seemed to be that way for most people as in the following year, this functionality was entirely removed from Exoforce's sets. Also up here, you have the functionality of what's called a destroyer disc launcher, and other than the color of the discs, it functions exactly the same way as the mobile defense tank and white lightning did in my previous reviews, and it is just as frustrating when it comes to actually launching them. They have a tendency to not go especially far, and you have them popping out the top sometimes. So not the best designed function of the series. While the design does definitely feel like a spindly, creepy spider with the, the Technic builds up the legs, I do find it frustrating that it doesn't have a whole lot of posability. You get the tiniest amount of posability down in the feet, and then you get some ratchet joints up here, but for the most part, you can't really position it anything other than this. If you splay them out too far, it ends up taking up a lot of space if you are... Um, trying to set it up in a display. And if you have it any higher, it looks honestly like a curled up dead spider. So honestly, there's no real other way to position it other than this. You also get some posability in the head. These cannons can move slightly up and down. These, this gun up here can rotate around, which is probably the best uh, posability feature of the set. And then you also have the ability to lift the cockpit right here so you can get to mecha one inside. So going back to the fact that it looks kind of like a spider, I do appreciate the spindly look, but it also ends up looking really gappy up here. 
I'm actually going to move the camera so you guys can see. It has this kind of gappy look where there's just nothing here or here. And honestly, the whole thing ends up looking really, really thin. And I wish that they would have taken the time to add some more uh, parts to kind of bulk it up a bit. It could still have that spider-like look without looking like it's about to fall apart. And believe me, it kind of does. So one of my greatest qualms with this set, and if you haven't figured out already, I'm not the hugest fan of it. Um, if you really want a big bad enemy for the um, human battle machines to fight, I suppose you can get it if you're willing to dish out the money. But quite honestly, the design of this set makes it really hard to appreciate, especially with how much they hyped it up over the course of that uh, particular year. When you pick it up, if you are not extremely gentle, you end up having these robots fall down because there's nothing locking them in place. It's cool that they have a lot of iron drones featured in this set, so it kind of feels like a little bit of an army is included with this battle machine. But they don't stay on very well. It doesn't really feel like they should be on the legs anyways. It doesn't feel like the greatest protective place to put them. I know they are kind of meant as cannon fodder, but literally they have no protection. If there's an enemy shooting, it literally just, they get destroyed right off the bat. Whereas these two up here kind of are a little bit more protected inside. These ones get really no protection from enemy fire. So I don't really know who came up with that idea, but at the very least, I would have liked for functionality's sake to have them click into place so that they don't just fall down when you're picking the set up. But not the greatest design. Finally, and this is my biggest qualm with this set, and this isn't the only time that a set does this, but it's, in my opinion, the greatest defense of it. This is supposed to be Mecha One's greatest kind of enemy battle machine to go up against the humans. So, when you buy this set, you expect to get Mecha One. But, if you open up the cockpit right here, you will see... You only get half of Mecha One. It does not have legs inside the cockpit. There's not enough space for them. And not only that, they didn't even have the decency to include some extra legs along with the set. They had arms for the Devastator up here, if that's what it's supposed to be, but they didn't include legs for Mecha One. And I think this really kind of nails down what is wrong with this set. It's incomplete. So, Highest negative recommendation possible. The only set that I would recommend less than this one for the first year would be Supernova, and that is only because its price tag is so high in comparison to this one. You will be spending about the same price getting either of these two sets, and at the very least, with this one, you get a nice parts pack. So, of course, one of the greatest appeals of the Exoforce line was its combo models and alternate models. I don't believe there are any combo models available for this set, but it does feature an alternate model, and I personally think this is one of the best ones that you can get. You can see it back here. Right here. It's called the Frontline Barricade, and basically, it's an enemy version of the Sentai Fortress. So, if you have the Sentai Fortress set, and you don't really like the way that this set is built, you can rebuild it to look like this. And by doing that, you can have kind of an enemy version of the Sentai Fortress. You can have two giant um, bases battle it out with each other with all their um, smaller battle machines. So, something worth noting. Now, I showed you guys Mecha One already. Um, this set also features six iron drones, and they are pretty much the same as the ones that you will see in the Sentry R1 Rammer sets. You can see right there, pretty standard fare. They also have, uh, four of them also include cannons, and four of them have the eyepieces. The two up here do not have any sort of weapon and do not include eyepieces. They kind of look as though they're charging up. And so maybe they're 
batteries are dead or something. So, pretty standard, uh, aside from Mechawan, who is incomplete, and thus I don't even really consider to be a, a full minifigure here, but if you guys are curious in looking at what he looks like up close, he is kind of the same as the one you'll get in the Bridgewalker versus White Lightning, minus the legs. With all that out of the way, I figure it's a good idea to still take a look at some of the story aspects of this set. So this battle machine was the big bad that was featured throughout year one. Uh, many missions by the humans involved collecting data and preparing to fight this machine. It was responsible for the attack that destroyed not only Supernova, but also the mobile defense tank, the stealth hunter, or at least potentially one of them. We don't know if there was only one at the time or if there was multiples at the time, but at least a stealth hunter, um, the gate defender, and did some serious damage to the Sentai Fortress. This particular battle machine, according to story-wise, had 24 inches of armor. It was incredibly well protected, so damaging it was nearly impossible for the humans, and if not for some ingenuitive thinking by Takeshi, um, who decided to tunnel underneath the striking venom, he went to the bridge underneath them, um, dug up, and shot the striking venom right underneath the head, where it wasn't able to point its weapons, and also had the weakest armor, this almost completely destroyed Mech 1, and this was actually expected to be the, the original mecha one there there were many um recordings throughout the year of them using fake mecha ones copies of him and when those were destroyed it wasn't a big deal because the original was still fine but because of the tactical need for having the original during this fight it is believed that this version of mecha one was in fact the original and he was almost destroyed during this fight to me, it's kind of sad that this battle machine was never included again. At the end of the battle, it wasn't completely destroyed. It was just heavily damaged in the head, and it crawled back to the robot side of the mountain. With Exoforce's kind of sad, incomplete ending, I think it would have been really cool if for the final battle with the robots in the deep jungle, for them to have brought this battle machine back um, and have it kind of be revamped to be more, like, arachnoid-like, and maybe have, like, um, different color scheme, different, um, features, and just kind of a revamped version of it for the final battle. I think that would have been an amazing ending to the Exoforce storyline. But, with that being said, we did not get that ending, and I guess that's all right. So, I thank you guys for joining me for this video. Sorry that it was such a, a negative one, but quite honestly, I think this is one of the poor, poorest design sets of this year, and considering the significance of this particular battle machine in the story, it really would have been nice if they would have designed it a little bit better. I think uh, people would have been a little bit more happy, especially me. So, with that, thank you guys for watching. Um, I will see you guys next week, and I will be going over the biggest Exo 4 set of all time, the Sentai Fortress. Thanks. Bye! Then there's a little crane back here where I have Rio stationed, and then there's lots of space, as you can see, where you can put other figures. So, all in all, 